with Charlotte and Joshua. Joshua is our new friend, and we've just got a Chinese name for you. Right? That's right. Thank Tell you, us your yes. Chinese name. Han Jie. Han Jie. But actually, you've been living in, in China for quite a few years. Uh, yeah, over 20. Over 20 years yeah. already. Been here for a long time. How come you don't have a Chinese name? <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't come up. <laughs> you know, when you were in China, when you studied in, say, in high school mm -hmm. in, in China, your classmates, they were Chinese or purely international students? Mostly international. So that's um, why. So yeah. 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 I, I guess if, Josh, you, if you Joshua. had Chinese students, they would find a Chinese student. Find the Chinese you. But you're an actor, actually. Yes. So you just came back from, what, what was the latest project? Uh, um, in English is? I believe tentatively titled Once Upon a Time in Tibet. In Tibet. So I think that title might be secured now. The shooting so it um, happened in Tibet. About three weeks in Tibet. Wow. Um, so, yeah, we're, so we're talking together with the film star. Give me some autograph. <laughs> your autograph. Oh. <laughs> I need to learn how to write my newly, my newly given name. <laughs> right. Yeah, Han Jie. Han Jie. Yeah, we have the event actually. I'll teach you after the show. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I mean, we're, we're actually again uh, coming to the year end again. It's a very important period. Uh, for this movie industry and the movie mm -hmm. producers, and mm -hmm. that's why all these days we've seen quite a few new films being released in China. Have you noticed some of them? You know, I haven't seen any of the uh, new films, but I've seen a lot of the um, trailers the and trailers. Yeah. Yeah, advertisements yeah, yeah. for them. They're all over. All a over lot town. of trailers. A They're lot. really all and over. Isn't Ge Yo is a, a very, a very talented actor. Chinese mm -hmm. actor? You know, you know, there, there are He's three. in all three, right? Exactly. I, that's, he must have that's, been so busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, he's already he's already established. But Gong Li, when she came out, was in three. Yeah, big but Gong Li was right in the same. mainly she was the actress for Zhang Yimou's uh, movies, uh, actually for the first few years, and all the movies produced by or directed by Zhang Yimou. Zhang Yimou had her. Well, yeah, had her in but there. But you mean that when she first got big, they had... Yeah, there were three, like there were three, three big movies. Chinese movies that came out that year. It was, mm. I think, in, in, in foreign festivals. And this is Ge Yu together with Feng one Feng. director of the three films, and it's Feng Xiaogang. And this is actually the promo for one of the three locally made blockbusters. It's called If You Are The One, yeah. Two. It looks funny. Yeah, 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 it looks really funny. Uh, one of the other two is called Sacrifice. It's directed mm -hmm. by Chen Kai Ge. Is an ancient story, and the other one that's directed by Jiang Wen mm -hmm. is called Let the Bullets Fly. Mm. And so far, all the reviews are pretty good. I've seen Sacrifice, it's pretty good. It's Everywhere. In, it's in so it's like fun. elevator advertisements, it, TV advertisements, it's all over the place. I think, like you were saying, the end of the year is a big <laughs> movie time. season. It's, a, it, it's a, maybe sort of the season's blockbusters will mm. come out towards the end of the year in China. That's true. Whereas I think in the States, it's Summer blockbusters. More summer. Summer is a big time. Generally, but there are a lot of movies that, that especially what, sequential, what like, like trilogies and stuff. Yeah, Christmas, a lot of times, like for example, Lord of the Rings, I think, was out, uh, when it was coming out in theaters, I think was out every December, like back to back in three years in a mm. row, and Harry Potter's been doing that for however long six, Harry Potter. Seven. Harry Potter was yeah. just a few weeks uh, Yeah, it's ago, in theaters yeah. now, I think. Yeah, so. it's, and it's international. I mean, it's a, a world premiere mm -hmm. all, all the same time. Mm -hmm. But it's like all these Chinese-made blockbusters are also being promoted and released in, say, taking the international practice. It's done in the international way. That's why we see all these, you know, uh, promos and... and mm -hmm. uh, trailers. Everywhere. Trailers and, yeah. everywhere. And they're really impressive, too. <laughs> they're really impressive. They look really good. Because it's an in international crew. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's the same people doing that stuff for different movies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you do it well. There, there are companies that, like, that's all they do is they do movie trailers. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So they'll it's, do movie trailers so, for all kinds I of mean, films. I mean, everything, every industry is so segmented. Mm. And, you know, for each part of this mm -hmm. industry, you have a professional team yeah. mm -hmm. doing that. There is even uh, a company, they just do chess. 
basically they have lots of chairs because if you have a concert you know it's oh, an open yeah. space right of you course. need lots of chairs of course they have lots of chairs <laughs> and they, so they industry rent out is chairs. created yes <laughs> exactly yeah. and then Absolutely. when you use one chair then that means you have to pay a certain amount of money but you know Absolutely, you don't have to yeah. own those chairs the company will do that <laughs> oh, i knew a guy who used to work for a company that did rented the um snow machines mm. the machines that make snow yes Okay. So logos or something like that. Snow Not for glow? a skiing resort or something. No, no, no. Flo for logos or logo or some, something or, go mm. glow snow. Anyway, <laughs> it makes fake snow for for uh, stage. Mm -hmm. No, no. Let's There's come back machine. to this movie so. industry. <laughs> <laughs> we have the snow movie. in movies. <laughs> <laughs> we have snow scenes, yeah, actually, in these movies. But uh, again, for China, it's the year-end uh, season, movie season. Uh, is seen as the most important season for the movie industry. My last year of high school in 1998, so it was Spring Festival of 1998, I actually had a small role in a Hesui Pian. <laughs> they do one, I think, every Beijing year. Beijing TV. Beijing TV, they do one every year. And I had a, a cameo in a that. cameo spot. In wow. that Hesui oh, cool. Pian, yeah. Huh? Wow. So that was probably right around when the now term there's was coined. the autograph that you want. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. <laughs> so yeah. When we are talking about the year-end movie season, or say celebrating the New Year's movie season, basically covers uh, from, say, the end of uh, November, or starting from December, mm -hmm. till the end of Chinese New Year celebrations. That's the 15th day of the uh, first lunar month. So, so it covers roughly two, three months. So like it's the about summer the blockbuster summer, yeah. season in America as so well. They are actually fighting very fiercely for that market share. And when we say in one week or two weeks time, three, four major films coming out, yeah. It's good news for the movie fans, it but is. It's, it's hard time for all these movie industry insiders. You know? It is, because competition is fierce. It is fierce. So the year-end movie season, extremely important with this movie industry and insiders in, in China. And not only Chinese-made blockbusters are fighting for a share of that market, all these imported ones. There's a lot of international films getting in here now. A lot of I remember when there were films. no international films in here. <laughs> Yeah, China, we, according to my understanding and knowledge, and there is a, a quota system. Mm -hmm. According to that system, uh, China uh, will be importing 20 movies for each year. That's not much. Not much quotas. Not but really, but I mean, I mean, if you think about it, you've got 12 months in a year. 20 films is a, it's so, a decent amount of movies. Yeah, it's so nearly two movies nearly a month. Nearly two movies for a month. And we're talking about these blockbusters like Harry Potter yeah, or they're Transformers. Yeah, they're huge films. Inception. Inception. That was just in recently. Yeah. That did really, really well, I think. Yeah, and apart from that, and, and there are individual cases, you you know, you need to apply for a permission to be imported, mm -hmm. and then that's put aside. But you know, I remember uh, watching Titanic in the theaters okay. here. James Cameron. 97, in, 98. 98, yeah, 98. In Chinese. Because at the time, the original voice soundtrack, you know, for the film, uh -huh. you couldn't, a lot of theaters would only show the dubbed, uh -huh. dubbed versions of the film. So the first time I ever saw Titanic was, oh, was it in was Chinese. Dubbed in Chinese. Jack uh, speaking Chinese. Yeah. That would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Huh. Well, dubbing, it's a very important industry, actually, in China, especially years ago, uh, when not so many people speak English. Mm -hmm and they would watch films being dubbed in Chinese. And all these artists are doing dubbing. They're yeah. like actors and actresses. It's a huge industry here. A huge yeah. industry. They would actually, you know, read the scripts first. And they well, you would... You can really get into it as an actor. They actually, they need to you get have into to. it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because you need the exact emotion and feeling that you've got going on a screen. So mm -hmm. you really have to commit to that script just like an actor would and be able to that's and true it's, and it can be even trickier i've done this <laughs> because <laughs> you've, you're you've, in a little you've done hubbing. yes you're in a little box and oh, wait, you did dubbing for yourself uh, dubbing, sorry. Mm. yes i did dubbing for myself after i finished my so after basically I finished filming you, you've been through the whole process yes. you know what's going on right a movie 
But what you're doing is you're watching a little screen and you're in a That's little true. box, a little studio, That's and true. you're recreating the same That's emotion. True. But to recreate that emotion in a room without it's, someone standing next yeah. to you, either pushing you or pulling you or someone yelling at you, it's really it's, different. it's really hard to, to come up with that and hold it. And then and when you're dubbing it, you miss it, you know, so you do it again and you miss it, so you do it again. And then they re-edit it, so you do it all over again. And it's it's a it's quite a process. And it's then, a lot of work. And I guess you didn't do it in Chinese, right? Did I did you? not do it in Chinese, no. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so do you have any dubbing, say, industry back in the States? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. voiceover and dubbing industry is huge because you also have um, animated films. But for documentaries or a... Um, well, yeah, documentaries is more just narration. Mm. Um, and then... Uh, cartoons, that's But huge. cartoons is huge. The reason why a film crew would, would film a movie with no sound is because it's much cheaper. And it's than really difficult to with take sound. care of that sound the whole time and make sure nothing's going on when you're That's filming it. So I think it's fair to say, even Hollywood, where budgets are high and you can spend all the money you want, basically, in every movie there will be parts that are dubbed. And a lot of that times, have to be dubbed. if you've mm. done the dubbing before, you can spot those spots. When you're watching the movie, you can just be watching you know it, it and go, you can hear That's it. That's dubbed. Yeah, you can, yeah. it's you can just not it. quite right. Not the same. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, the, the inside emotion, the feeling for that part, mm -hmm. is just different when you're yeah, it's doing it in the studio. Bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You Sometimes know, they do a great job of it and you would never know, but. Also, they do dubbing for, um, uh, like, airplane movies. Mm. Because a lot of films, they have to take out bad language. Mm -hmm. Things like that. <laughs> so they have funny. dubbing. They, I'm sure they, there's, there are people that just specially do dubbing for airplanes. Just a, mm, mm, right. <laughs> <laughs> they have these little parts out. Yeah. I'm sure airplanes. You know, any kind of transportation, like where, where these movies would be publicly shown. You know. Yeah. We have a long history of importing foreign movies, but it's only these years because it's all blockbusters, and we've started to notice all these blockbusters being imported. But which films are the most successful ones? Not all movies are, are doing quite well in the Chinese market with Chinese audiences, but That's which true. films are the most successful films with the Chinese market? Well, Titanic was huge. That was huge in 1997. Titanic was huge everywhere. All over the world. Yeah. So it was Avatar. <laughs> oh, Avatar. Yeah. Avatar. Avatar. It's James Cameron's the film. total uh, box office revenue, 1.4 billion. In China, or maybe. I saw pictures of the. I, I saw Avatar. It wasn't too crowded. It had been out for a little while, and it wasn't the the Remember. IMAX, and it wasn't too crowded. But I saw pictures of some of the theaters where they were showing Avatar, and it was a zoo. Crazy, crazy. You know, sometimes when you're traveling here uh -huh. and you're trying to get train tickets or something, and there's just there's so many people. Trying to get train tickets, it was the same. Just like it was that. the same look, but it was a theater. <laughs> it was Avatar tickets. <laughs> I, I, well, it was unbelievable. It's. I tried to get a, the uh, three IMAX ticket mm. to watch Avatar for the second time. I never got one. Is this when it first came out, or or later? It was like uh, one month or even two months after. And you couldn't get one. I couldn't get That's one. That's why we saw the regular version because the the yeah. IMAX was sold out until the next. Exactly. Week. There are only four IMAX cinemas in Beijing mm -hmm. and it's you know you 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 can't even book on on the internet because they they said no because too many people mm -hmm. applying for that ticket you know James Cameron shot that film to be to be shown in 3d it was uh -huh. supposed to be shown in 3d so that I think fueled a lot of the urge for people to see this this That's film right. he in 3D. Invented, didn't he invent a camera for that? Uh, he worked on creating some of the technology to do it. I think Avatar, he had the idea and the concept for Avatar in 1995 or something. And he said waited he for the exactly. technology for the to technology. get created. Yep. And then after the technology was created and the film was done, then had to wait for theaters to install the equipment to actually be able to show the film the way that it, it was supposed to be, to be filmed, and it still, or it's supposed to be shown, yeah, and it still wasn't quite, quite up to snuff. So he could wait. The yeah. story is, is already been there, but Absolutely. he could wait for the right technology. A perfectionist. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, more movies, either Chinese made or international ones, uh, mm -hmm. which are very popular, with, very successful in China. A short break.
Drug driving is an offense, and it will seriously impair your driving ability. For your own and others' safety, don't take the risk. Drug driving ruins lives. And welcome back to Crossover. So apart from this avatar, which basically created a craze for a 3D technology, 3D movies, and IMAX studios mm -hmm. or cinemas. And next one. We're going to tell you the most successful movies, the eight successful movies in China in all these years. So Avatar is by far the most successful movie mm -hmm. in terms of its uh, box office revenue. The second movie, which is very successful in, in China, it's Aftershock. The Chinese film. Chinese film. Mm. That's At the, the box earthquake. office revenue. Yeah, yeah. The Tangshan, about the Tangshan earthquake. About Tangshan earthquake in 1976. Yeah. And the total revenue, total revenue, it's 660 million. You know, I, I never, I didn't see it. Million. I didn't see it because I was warned by friends that it's just mm -hmm. Heart-wrenching. Heart it's a heart-wrenching yeah. film. I didn't watch it. And I can't I do heart-wrenching. <laughs> I can't do heart-wrenching, but but I'm really not surprised it did as well Very as it touching. did. Very touching. Yeah. Because the Tangshan it's earthquake in Chinese history, especially modern Chinese history, is mm. was huge. It's you know, it, it's a huge historical event. Uh, even though it's quite a, a sort of very big social topic, the, mm. the earthquake film, that Avatar came out this year too, right? So that's the two highest grossing films in China out this year. Because, you know, it's, it's slowly becoming a bigger and bigger thing to be able to go to the movies and see the movies. And the movies are coming here. The money is coming here. Mm. People are looking to do their movies here. And That's true. this and year, you've got the two biggest box office draws in China's mm. history. And China's movie industry is also growing it oh, and their movies are incredible the speed of light the the, yeah. the cinematography the shots the scenes the action they're what's in the third what well in the third place 2012 that's from last huh. year from 2009 hmm. and the total revenue is 460 million and then in the fourth place transformers number two transformers in 2009. What, do you like it? I love Transformers. I grew up playing with Transformers. <laughs> Since childhood, huh? And the total revenue, 430 million. Mm -hmm. 430 That's all million. in, in Remimbi RMB. And in the fifth place, uh, The Founding of a Republic. Okay. That's a Chinese movie. Have you noticed it? It's actually, you see virtually hundreds of all these big faces in this movie oh, industry. Yeah, it's Full of stars. Yeah. Full of stars. So full of stars. One of the games that we played was we, we tried to count the number of Spot these the stars. Exactly. <laughs> and at the time was like, you know, if you are not invited to be a part of that for only maybe two seconds, that means you're not big shot enough. You're not, you're, not enough. <laughs> you're not enough to make it into a cameo role exactly. in the background. So next one, Inception. Inception. 2010. You know, I'm surprised Inception isn't higher it's on the this list. this year as well. I guess it's just two movie, too many movies coming out at mm -hmm. the same time. Maybe. And maybe because I had more people, more of my Chinese friends talk the reviews to me are quite good. about Inception than yeah. any movie I you think know what, that's there, come out this year. There's also a trick to that too, though, is what your story is for certain movies. Because Inception's got... A decent enough story to it. It's a little heady. You've got to have your thinking cap yeah, on. You, you have can't to close off or fall asleep you know? or go to the bathroom. You got, exactly. <laughs> so it's it's a it's got um, and, and, and if you take a film like Avatar, that has not only this sort of technological side to it that's just so advanced and mm. and moving and sort of shattering to mm. watch these three D effects, and then on top of that, it's just a lovely universal story. story. So there really wasn't anything that so, was so profound, profound to, no. to Avatar, but the story was beautiful and it had the same sort of appeal, kind of no matter who you so are. So basically, where you are. it's two types of movies. And yeah. movies like Avatar, mainly they're made for your eyes. Well, movies like Inception is made for your brains. Right. <laughs> you have to work very hard to understand well, and you the logic. One for your heart. Yes. Exactly. Some movies go 
it's the visual like aftershock? but also like aftershock yeah aftershock yeah and the total revenue for inception is 410 million should be bigger than that huh? i would have expected it to be higher yeah, yeah. but that's quite a draw it's a lot it's it a is. lot yeah it is and in the seventh place is wow titanic ah there you go but remember, that's that nearly 12 years ago. <laughs> yes. 12 years ago, yeah. And that was back when going to the movies wasn't as common as it no. is today. And the ticket price is not as high as today. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the there total were very revenue, few movies coming out then, too. They managed to get 360 million. That's a lot. 360 RMB million. In almost 12 years ago. 12 years ago. James Cameron's head must be... <laughs> And in the eighth place is, again, I mean, it's by the same director. It's Feng Xiaogang's work again, if you are the right one. Hmm. Series one. Okay. And that's in 2008, 340 million. Wow. 340 million. Wow. Still quite good. Yeah? Very he's, good. He's and then movies like Crouching Higer, Tiger, Hidden Dragon Leon, that did really, really Tommy. well overseas. Yep. And not so well really in China. do so much here. So with other movies, at least heroes, nodding here. Like I mean, we have a full list of these movies, how they're doing in the Chinese market. But again, you know, but these are the most successful ones. And the importing of these blockbusters made in other countries. It all started in 1993. Hmm. The first imported movie from Hollywood, well, the big blockbuster. To be shown in theaters. In theaters hmm. in China. In 93. Fugitive by Harrison Ford. I did hmm. not know that was in theaters in China. That was in 1993. I think I was in the US in 93. And that was, was a huge, huge struck. Just like a striking effect to all these, you know, for the movie, uh, the industry insiders, for I the bet. movie fans, they, they started to realize, okay, movies can be done in this way. Mm -hmm. I bet, I bet. Because yeah, it opens it up. The movie industry in China has only recently become as booming as it is. Before it was all TV series, miniseries, mm. uh, and, and people would, would watch television much more than they would go to the movie Still theaters. Still very popular, the series. Yes, series. but, yeah, but yeah. The, you know, going to the cinema is catching up. Mm -hmm. uh, and in 1993, that was the time when all these movie industry was worried about, say, okay, we've opened the door, all these blockbusters coming in. And how are we going to survive? And we do recognize the gap in, say, the philosophy, in, right. in technology, and everything everywhere about the movie. And we lack so much behind. And now you open the door. Mm -hmm. I mean, though we still have that mechanism, say, 20 movies before there was 10 movies each year protecting the movie industry, but how come that we can cope with all these challenges brought up by all these Hollywood blockbusters. Oh, yeah. But now the blockbusters are over here. Yeah. So the blockbusters are homegrown now in China. True. So they're, I mean, they're, the, the films that they're making are easily on par mm. with Hollywood. Zhang Yimou helped yeah. create the, you know, the part of the Chinese movie industry. Mm in the early years yep. with a lot of his hits that did very well overseas because I think in part that helped you know focus people's attention on China as a movie producing country you know that had the capability and the you know everything it took to to make a very good film mm -hmm. whereas prior to that it wasn't as mainstream mm -hmm. you know seeing big Chinese films. I was just going to say that the Crouching Higer, Tiger, Hidden Dragon was also one of those. Um, it showed the potential of for Chinese appeal elements. into foreign markets mm. coming out of here. You know, there are a lot of films that come out of, of, of international markets that won an appeal to coming into China, but the appeal of that going into other, other countries was huge. But the team was like Taiwan... Hollywood. Hong Kong, China, Hollywood. That's true. So it had all the backing behind it, and I think that move is what you're going to start seeing more because people are coming here. That was actually a Hollywood production. To find the investment. Yeah, it was yeah. a complete Hollywood yeah. production. Yeah. Full Hollywood production? Yeah. yeah. Huh. But it's about Chinese story, and that's uh, like the start of uh, Chinese stories or Chinese cultural elements being incorporated 
into Hollywood blockbusters and like like Kill Bill, Kill Bill, uh, mm -hmm. Charlie's Angels, right? Mm -hmm. They had they do all the martial arts and moves. Kung Fu Panda, <laughs> my favorite. Yeah, I like Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> yeah. And in 2009, for the first six months, it's 4.6 billion. 2010. 2010 for the first six months. For the first nine months, it's 7.1 billion. Wow! So wow. it's already gone. And over. they're predicting. They're saying uh, for the whole year, it could be over 10 billion. Oof. That's a huge increase. A huge are, there increase. More, are there more Chinese films coming out before the end of this year?